Alright, so a quick caveat to my regular viewers. I know that I have made a lot of videos regarding the George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin case. And what can I say? I've gotten attached to it so much so that this is actually my 18th video on the matter. And I'm trying to move these videos that I've been making to my backup channel, to Waterman 2, mainly for the purposes of, of keeping them off my main channel. So that's what's going on. So let's look at what we want to discuss in this video. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, I've been thinking, hmm, what... What picture should I use these days? I think that these two photos show the polarization of the case itself. Let's look at those. Contrast them. I think that, that says it all. That is, a, if you don't know, that's uh, Trayvon Martin's Twitter account name. Which I'll leave a link to his his tweets. So let's move on with the, uh, the, the, uh, the screams, right? What do we have as far as the yells and screams are concerned? Well... The first one, and probably the most significant one that we are aware of, is the eyewitness John. This is the person who was actually close enough to at least make out what the people were wearing and identify Zimmerman as the one who was on bottom yelling for help. So he actually saw who yelled for help. I, I know of no other witness available to the public that was actually close enough because it was very dark that night, very dark in that area where they were fighting. He was the only one close enough to actually identify who yelled for help. This doesn't mean that Trayvon Martin didn't also yell, which we'll talk about more here in a, in a minute. Then, of course, we have George Zimmerman himself, who is an eyewitness that night. Now, of course, people are going to say, well, yeah, he's going to say he was the one yelling. Well, yeah, that's true. The same would go for the Trayvon Martin family, but, however... So we also had, what, George's brother come out, George's father come out saying, yeah, that's George Zimmerman on the 911 tape. You can hear yelling for help. Then there is a, this is odd. This is Tra uh, Trayvon's, Trayvon's father, Tracy, who I believe said something to the effect, I haven't tracked down the original statement. If anybody has that, let me know. Uh, I haven't tracked down the original statement, but uh, the people have talked about it. They have said that, well, Tracy Martin said that that doesn't sound like his son on a tape. Something to that effect. Uh, like I said, I don't have the original quote, so I don't know exactly what he said. But also, the uh, George Zimmerman's attorney alluded to that in the bail hearing, saying something to the effect to that uh, to the prosecutor's side who investigated the case, saying something to the effect of, are you aware of what Trayvon Martin's father has said about those voices on the tape? And the guy was like, no. Well, he was alluding to the fact that Trayvon Martin's father said it doesn't sound like his son or something like that. So that's an odd one, okay? And what else do we have? We also have the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Now, I know there's a lot of idiots out there who think that when the police arrived on scene, they just gave George Zimmerman a pat on the back and let him go home that night, right? I know that's what people think because they're idiots, but that's just not the case. He was arrested that night. Well if you want to use the word arrested, he was detained, put in cuffs right away, and taken to the police station and and interviewed for hour after hour after hour. And that was one of his first grillings. This really comes from the newly released information uh, from the Daily Beast. They came out with an article. I just put in the, the parts that I thought were important to what's being said here. So we know that George Zimmerman had... a uh, given his account to to well to everybody right to the police department to the to the FBI to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement but m most importantly what we we want to look at here is that Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigators had Zimmerman lie on his back in another location in an effort to recreate the position he said he had been in during the shooting then the source said investigators recorded Zimmerman as he shouted what had been heard on the 911 calls cries such as help me and whatnot so clearly the the state has this information now it would seem to me that what they did that for was to do an analysis and a comparison to the 911 calls now the prosecutor side during that bail hearing also said that the FBI did something like that so it seems to me that now we don't have this information though we don't have what the Florida Department of Law Enforcement what their conclusion was although we do have that source saying that he agrees with uh, George Zimmerman's side of the story. This, uh, whoever this is, this law enforcement source, familiar with the case. He personally believes Zimmerman's account. 
but I don't know if that law enforcement source is aware how how familiar he is with the this recreation and the the, the, the recording and the comparison. If there's a compare, I would assume there's a, there was a comparison done. I don't know how familiar he is. Uh, was it inconclusive? Is that what they came to? Was it inconclusive? I, I don't know. There's no indication of that here. The fact is, though, we don't know. We just don't know. And the FBI, of course, they haven't released any of their information. Now, all right, well, we have the the witness statements to to police, you know, their interviews. That, that stuff has never been released, so we don't know what they originally said. We have a f couple of people come out after the fact. We'll get to that here in a moment. All right, so all that's important, too, but we just don't have it. And, of course, we got Trayvon's mother says, no, it does sound like her son on the tape. Now, all, all this kind of, all, all, all up to this point, you think about this. We got the eyewitness, John right but identifies George Zimmerman as the one yelling for help we have the Florida Department of Law Enforcement doing their recording the and we have George Zimmerman's account those three things alone the state's attorney must have these three things in their possession before they wrote their affidavit she has all that information right the eyewitness John George Zimmerman's statement from the th three interviews with different law enforcement officials and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement's recording, recreation, and more than likely comparison, she has all that. It really begs the question, why did she include, <laughs> right here, Trayvon Martin's mother has reviewed the 911 calls and identified the voice crying for help as Trayvon Martin's voice. Well, that's true. But if this Florida Department of Law Enforcement comparison and the FBI, whatever they did with their tapes, if that shows otherwise, and the eyewitness John shows otherwise, you can exclude George Zimmerman's testimony. I mean, that sounds to me like they just ignored that shit. They're just like, yeah, so what if the FBI determines that it might have been George Zimmerman, or the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, or that it was inconclusive? And so what if we have a witness that says contrary to what Trayvon's mother says? That's just dastardly. This is supposed to be the truth. Oh man, I just I, I can't believe that they have this this evidence from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the FBI and the eyewitness and they what they ignore it. Well, anyway, so let's move on to the so you know the family though. Yeah, of course the family, aside from Trayvon's father, the family is going to say yeah it's Trayvon Martin on the tape and of course George Zimmerman's family is going to say yeah it was George Zimmerman on the tape. So you know, but still we have much stronger stuff than that, anyways. All right, so what else do we have? We got the 911 callers with the screams. There were three of them that I'm aware of. There's what was called call number three that has the screams and yell for help that yells for help that everybody's aware of. That is available to the public. We have one that is not available to the public. Uh, she said that she held the phone up to the window while they were screaming. So clearly that uh, we have another tape there that we're just not aware of. Then we have call number four but that sound is, is it's the one where it sounds like a young girl, but she says she's 30, and it's only right at the beginning there that may have the gunshot on it. The problem is that that version was like redacted; it was edited because the girl was giving out her address and phone number or whatever, so we don't really hear anything on that one. But the the police version, the unedited version, might have something on it. But those are the only three that we have, and this is the only one that we have available to us that really has the screams on it. All right, and then we have all the other 911 callers down here. None of them, this is all after the fact, all after the shot. You hear call number two, that was, that sounds like it's the eyewitness, John. We have call number five, it was an older lady, and she says she thinks that sh there are screams of an old man, an old man down the street, down the, a couple of houses down. Call number six, that's Mary Kutcher. On the call itself, there, she gives no, absolutely no description of anything that she heard. Everything that she's said to the media after the fact has been what I think has been highly influenced by this image here. Now, I know this is not the images the media has actually used. This is an exaggeration. Well, they have used this one, but mostly the, the older but younger version of Trayvon Martin. But this is what I believe that uh, Mary Kutcher and Selma have in mind when they think of that night. So everything they say about they heard that night, they have retrofitted this image into that. So I believe they're compromised. I don't. You can. We would have to actually hear, uh, or actually see, read their statements to police that they originally gave and what they said in it, because everything they said after the fact doesn't match up with everything we know. 
Uh, first of all, that they said that they heard no actual words. Right? They, they didn't hear it. They weren't even concerned about the noises before the, the pop or the sound. They didn't know it was a gunshot. They kind of figured maybe a little afterward, but they weren't certain. They weren't even concerned about the screams and yells for help, whereas everybody else was. So I don't even think they heard much of anything before that pop. So it's all, you know, it, it just, everything they say it goes against everything else that everybody else is saying. So I just don't know about those two, man. Then we got the old lady who's very distraught. It's the long call. And then we have call number eight uh, that starts with a, a little girl then goes to the, that young black boy seen on YouTube who is also an eyewitness. But there's some sketchy reporting done about when he was interviewed how supposedly I don't trust much of anything of what the not not the Martin family themselves, but the people they surrounded themselves with, those race merchants like Crump. I don't believe much of anything those people have to say. So I go out of my way not to quote them. But they say something to the effect of uh, that the little boy was coerced in some way uh, not coerced, but led in some way by investigators to say that it was George Zimmerman on the bottom or something uh, as far as I know it was just too dark the kid was too far away he didn't he couldn't positively identify who was on top or bottom he knows that somebody was on top or bottom well, whatever all right so as far as I know this is all the information that is available as to who the yells belong to all right now we have a couple of what there was one guy who came out that is pimping his software that cost five thousand dollars to to buy pimping his voice analysis software we got him out there saying that well it sounds to me like it's not George Zimmerman with a whatever percent accuracy yada da but here's the thing about that I would like to see what method he used because it could very well be that some of those voices on the tape yelling uh, could be Trayvon Martin that could be true some of those screams and yells could be George Zimmerman. It could be both. So if he took both and put them all together, right, took just the screams that were available without somebody talking over them, and let's say there's six of them, and two of those yells happen to be Trayvon Martin, and two happen to be George Zimmerman, and he puts them together and does a voice analysis, that sounds like it's going to screw that up. Uh, not only that, he's comparing it to the voice of George Zimmerman talking calmly, to screams and yells whereas the the better method is what the Florida Department of Law Enforcement did was to actually have George Zimmerman recreate yells and screams and such and then there's a, a second guy so I question his method I'm not questioning so much the fact that he's trying to pimp out his five thousand dollar software I'm questioning his method what did he do he doesn't he doesn't go over that very much except to say that he took out some screams or whatever okay whatever and then you got some the other guy who says that he's a uh, been in music in for 30 years or something and it's just his intuition he can tell by listening to the 911 call or the non-emergency call that George Zimmerman has where he's talking calmly to the screams and yells and he says well you know I'm I'm a, I've been in music for a long time so I my intuition tells me that it's not George Zimmerman <laughs> Okay, well, so as far as I know, though, that's all that is available regarding the yells and screams. I'll leave the links and such in the description box, and if anybody comes up with the original quote from Tracy Martin, that would be good. I'll try to find that, though. We'll see what comes of this. All right, so peace out, my brother, sisters, and everyone in between.